so what is what what drove somebody to uh, say i prefer paging rather than can you guess i'll give you 2 minutes can you come out with an answer why should why should say for example linux talk about ensuring you know protection through paging rather than segmentation what well, is simple reason what could be a simple reason most obvious paging is dynamically allocated segmentation also dynamically can as a ways designer right look at from a ways designer point of view is more controlled segmentation is more controlled see that the essential thing as a os designer uh, what will you do so you want to start a os uh, group see you don't want to bind yourself to an architecture correct correct yes or no you don't want to really kill yourself with some with respect to an architecture when i write an operating system you should work on the processor a processor b processor c processor d you can't write one operating system for each one of these processors correct Are able to get what I am trying to say, right? So that is that is perhaps one of the major reasons why, uh, if you look at segmentation versus uh, paging, and if you finish your fourth assignment, after you finish your fourth assignment, you will realize that paging is much more generic than the segmentation. See that segmentation here. That that 64 bits that you have assigned. Some some 16 bits are here. Some 16 three bits are there. Some two bits are here. it is like you know uh, you know like if you, if you take a co- cockroach put it in ink and put it on a paper white paper no the way it will go and scratch it like that things are distributed right that's 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 the easiest analogy i could get <laughs> correct right there's no rational if you ask me why this for a limit bit some 16 is there some four is somewhere in the middle okay so <laughs> absolute thing why these things so if you ask these why questions we don't know we don't have an answer much more than it but probably there may be some something more okay now but when you look at that and this right at least you you should do your fourth assignment after that you will appreciate that paging is much more generic than this so if i want to take this operating system and put it on to say spark or into ibm power x or anything i want to move it to the next uh, you know architecture power or spark and whatever around right if i am going to invest my time on paging then for me to go and do that paging say everything has a multi level page walk so for me to go and switch this operating system for uh, you know the next architecture i will be more happy to play with the paging the effort would be much less if i depend upon the paging mechanism rather than the segmentation mechanism right segmentation will go mad you have to rewrite the entire operating system well what is after all what is the operating system the major thing there is memory management right process management is trash okay so it's not that great the entire whole thing is memory management because everywhere i see I, as i told you right from execution of an instruction there are five stages three stages touch memory when i want to start execution of an instruction when i want to start the process i have to allocate memory and I have, when i want when i look at protection what is protection you should not read my memory okay is not that you should not use the cpu or anything you can share everything else in that life that your general purpose registers can be shared your uh, your uh, cpu can be shared alu can be shared bus can be shared peripherals can be shared one thing you cannot share is memory right the whole operating system is basically governed by memory today the whole problem of information security comes because we have memory issues because there is some loophole in memory management right uh, are you able to appreciate these facts right so so that is par- so the operate the strength of an operating system basically comes from how effectively they could handle them. and so when i move from when i have invested so much time on developing an operating system for an architecture and i want to move to a next level architecture the major thorn in that flesh would be memory management and that i want to safeguard so when we look at segmentation as a memory management principle 
was as paging as a memory management principle in the context of x86 we find that paging is more generic than segmentation that is why we would like to invest more time on okay so before we wind up today let me just cover one more topic and then when a process comes to execution now i give it say some i am an operating system how many pages should i allocate so the compile when i compile right i know the size of the code and all i know the size of data so i will allocate that many pages as much as that that many data is there okay so right so so that that page allocation will happen in the virtual address space now what will happen is when i want to execute i am doing demand paging right so i have to move from the virtual i have to move the pages from the virtual address space to the ram in the ram suppose i, I as a program i have say i need say five pages of code and say six pages of data right i can't allocate 5 and 6 that then that means your virtual address and effective address uh, and physical address become same so i will add, allocate some amount of pages right i'll say okay have have say k pages for code k, k page frames for code some r page frames for data i you need some 10 page 10 pages your code spawns across 10 pages i cannot give you 10 pages in the main memory right i'll only give you say two or three pages so you use these three or three two or three pages in the main memory and keep moving your page frames there here and there and then try and execute it okay so as a process p1 my code spawns across say 10 pages of code five pages of data actually 15 pages of data three pages of stack this is my full requirement but in the thing i i will go and say this is your size so okay i'll give you four pages of code some six pages of data and uh, say one page of or two pages of stack you use these 12 pages and execute this 28 page program so that means as and when you will keep replacing pages you will take page and right so the number of actual page frames allocated for your program you have to use those page frames and keep shifting your pages in and out to see that your program goes to execute this is right so as a process i will need i will need so many pages as a operating system i will give you so many page frames use these page frames to execute your program the number of page frames that i am allocating may be proportional to the number of pages actually you require sometimes it is okay so that that's again there is again hundreds of papers written you know and uh, 50s of students who have got phd and tens of professors who have got tenure track by this okay with the, to study this relationship okay but that the thing is very very simple right to understand this as a concept it is just i am giving you k frames this is a k frames is your requirement k k pages are your requirement some r frames are given use this k page r frames to execute that k page program now i'll just ask one question and stop here why should i give two pages at least say for data on instruction why should i give two pages at least if i just give one page what would be the problem i am giving one page so use that page for code one page for code one page for data one page for stack I lose one page for the page directory. That's okay. Ah, uh, that's okay. One page directory and one, one, one. Four pages I give you. One page directory, one for code, one for data, one for stack. Yes, question. Uh, if you had two, two different operands and you needed, uh, then if they were in two different pages, then you need certainly need. two different operands okay a very simple thing let me say i am accessing uh, uh, say eax comma some some address right move right so uh, suppose uh, so this 
2 bytes of so this is a 32 bit right 4 byte let me assume 2 bytes are in this page and the remaining 2 bytes are in this page and this is the page boundary okay now i have allocated only one page for data so i'll be loading this and when i start executing this command what will happen it will get the 2 bytes the remaining 2 bytes will say page fault sir once i get a page fault what I do, I go to the page fault handler. I have got only one page for data. So I will go and load this and start re executing this instruction. Then there is our page fault again. <laughs> so I will go. So I will be, I'll be just ping ponging. One page will come here, again it will go, another page will come. This move will never complete. Okay, this is a very, very simple, obvious reason why I have to allocate at least two pages. If I do not allocate two pages, then what will happen? I will have these four bytes. 2 bytes on one page and exactly on that boundary or 3 bytes there, 1 byte here or 1 byte there and 3 bytes, just spawn it across. So when I try to access that, one data page will be there, correct? I will get that data page. Now I will find only 1 byte is there, remaining 3 bytes. I, there is no provision of keeping 1 byte and saying, okay, come next. So I will just cancel that instruction because that instruction has cost me a, the granularity is one instruction there. This instruction has cost me a page fault, okay. Suspend that instruction, store that PC. Now I will go and execute the page fault handler. Again, come and start that instruction again. Then it will find out that again three pages are missing. Right? So that is perhaps another reason why there is something called alignment check. AC flag. If you go and look at your E flags register, there is something called an alignment check flag. Alignment check essentially says that you have to align all your 4 byte access on 4 byte boundaries. Okay. So this basically will not allow you, this basically will not allow you to have something in, in a 2, so this will happen if this, this particular uh, variable starts at a 2 byte boundary, right? right? This, is, this is because this is a 0 to 4095. So if I have a 4 byte variable starting with 2 bytes here or 3 bytes here, 1 byte here, it is not actually starting on a 4 byte boundary. So when you are compiling, you do, when you are compiling and executing for the first time, you put this alignment check flag to check where and all these type of violations are happening. And you go and take care of that violation. Essentially you put some dummy bytes inside to see that all these are aligned properly. If they are aligned, then this type of an issue will not come. Okay. So alignment check flag, I will also talk in the context of memory management a little later, but this is very, very important. I think I, I talked about alignment check in the third, third semester course also, but we will we'll cover a little more on that. Okay?